Hey kids, this is Miss Butcher. This video is on factoring polynomials, and my fourth period class wants to say hello. 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 Now, if a polynomial is factorable, it will be factored completely when it is written as a product multiplication of unfactorable polynomials, smaller little unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients. Now, if we're going to factor, follow the steps on the handout. I gave you that handout a long, long time ago. I'm going to give you a new copy in class, and I'm going to put it on the next screen. You don't have to copy it down. I'm just going to put it on the next screen so you remember what I'm talking about. If I ask you to solve, then remember you have to set everything equal to zero, then factor your polynomial, and then set each piece of that polynomial, or each, each of those factors, equal to zero and solve. So now we're just going to do a whole bunch of examples. This is the factoring handout that I'm referring to. All right, so for some example problems, let's factor 3x to the fifth minus 243x. Remember, the very first thing we're going to do is factor out a greatest common factor. In this case, that will be 3x. Okay, then we're going to recognize, oh my goodness, x to the fourth minus 81 is the difference of squares because x to the fourth is x squared squared, and 81 is 9 squared. And a difference of squares factors to a plus b a minus b, so we've got this. x squared plus 9 x squared minus 9. Now, we say, oh my gosh, we have another difference of squares. This time, we have x squared minus 3 squared, so that's going to factor to x plus 3 x minus 3. And some of you might say, oh, an x squared plus 9. No, that's a sum of squares, which is not a thing. So we're done. This is broken down into one, two, three, four different parts, all of them unfactorable. It is the product of unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients. I don't have any nasty fractions in here. All done. Okay, this time we're going to factor 8x cubed minus 1. And hopefully you look at that and you say, oh my goodness, it is a difference of perfect cubes. Now, remember on that factoring handout, I said, oh, you don't have to memorize the sum and difference of cubes yet. Now you do. It is time to memorize the uh, formulas for sum and difference of cubes. Here, I wrote it for you, just in case you don't remember it. But you will remember it, a cubed minus b cubed. That's going to be a minus b, and then a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case... Our a is 2x because 8x cubed is the same thing as saying 2x all cubed. And our b is 1 because 1 is 1 cubed. So when we factor that a minus b, we've got 2x minus 1. And then we have a squared. So we're going to square 2x. We get 4x squared. Make sure you square both pieces. Plus a b, so plus 2x times 1 is plus 2x. Plus b squared, so plus 1 squared plus 1. And there, we're done. Because once you've used the formula, it's not factorable any further. Okay, here's another one. This one looks nasty. But look at it. Do we have a GCF? Yes, we do. Both of those numbers are divisible by 3. So we divide out the 3, and now we have 64x cubed plus 125. And I really um, hope you guys know your cubes. If not, maybe make a list of them and memorize them. Because you should really be able to look at 64 and go, I know that that is 4, at 4 cubed. So 64x cubed is the same thing as 4x all cubed. And you should be able to look at 125 and go, and that is 5 cubed. So now we're going to use the formula for the sum of cubes. Once again, memorize that sucker. It's a plus b and a squared minus ab plus b squared. So you see this plus and this minus are the opposite of what they were on the other one. All right, so in this case, our a is 4x. So we're going to go 4x plus, and then b is 5. 4x plus 5. Oh, don't forget this 3. He has to stay there. Let me try to get him written on there. 3. Ah, there we go. And then a squared, if I square 4x, I get 16x squared minus ab. So minus 4x times 5 would be minus 20x. And then plus b squared, so plus 5 squared is plus 25. And then we are finished. Because once you use the formula, you're done. 
All right, here's a fourth degree polynomial that we need to factor. It looks hard at first until you say, okay, I know I have a GCF of um, k squared. k squared goes into all of those. So we factor out a k squared, and we have 5k squared plus 8k minus 4. And then it's just a quadratic, and we all know how to do quadratics, right? Let's review, just in case, you multiply 5 and negative 4. So AC is negative 20. B is 8. Factors of negative 20 that add up to 8 are going to be 10 and negative 2. So we split the middle. We've got 5k squared plus 10k minus 2k and then minus 4. And we group. So we have 5k factors out. We have k plus 2. We can factor out a negative 2, k plus 2, gives us 5k minus 2, and k plus 2. And don't forget that k squared from the, from the original. And so now it is factored down into unfactorable polynomials. All right, here is a polynomial to factor. It's a cubic. Um, we don't have a GCF this time. So far, we've gotten away with factoring out a GCF and then using formulas that we know or quadratics that we know. But remember, when you have four terms, sometimes grouping will work. Sometimes it won't, but it's always worth a shot. So let's group the first two. We could take out 4a squared leaves us with 5a plus 1, right? Out of the second group, we can take out a negative 9 which leaves us with 5a plus 1. And so if these two match, it works. That means that that's one of your factors, 5a plus 1. And 4a squared minus 9 will be the other one. Oh, looky, we've got another difference of squares. I need you guys to be able to recognize those every time. So 5a plus 1 is fine the way it is, but 4a squared minus 9 will be 2a plus 3 and to a minus 3 because it is a difference of squares. Then you can say you're done. All right, new topic we're going to solve, but basically we're going to have to factor in order to solve. So I want to solve eight of x to the fifth equals 8x squared. Some of you guys are going to be tempted to just divide both sides by x squared and make it go away and then say x to the third equals 8 and solve it that way. However, if you do that, you're going to lose some of the answers. So do not do that. You always set it equal to zero. Every single time you set it equal to zero. Highlight that. Circle it. Square it. Star it. Make it a big deal. Set it equal to zero. We're not just going to divide off an x squared. It can't go off. It can't go away because we're solving. So we need x to the fifth minus 8x squared equals zero. Then we can factor out the x squared, but we're not going to divide it off. We're just going to pull it out to the left. And then we can have x to the third minus 8, all equals 0. And then we can go, oh, x to the third minus 8 is a difference of cubes. And we've got that formula memorized, so it's x minus 2. And then x squared plus 2x plus 4. Okay, and it's all equal to 0. So if I set that equal to 0, I have x squared equals 0. That gives me x equals 0. And if I set x minus 2 equal to 0, I get x equals 2. And if I set x squared plus 2x plus 4 equal to 0, and I use the quadratic formula or the graphing calculator, that's not going to give me a real solution. That's going to be a parabola up here above with no real solution. So x equals 0 and 2 are the only correct answers. Okay, but 0 works and 2 works. All right, here's another equation to solve. Lucky us, yes, it's already set equal to 0, so now we want to factor it. I have a GCF of 4x, gives me x to the 4th minus 10x squared plus 9 equals 0. And then remember the ones that we talked about where if this is a 4 and this is a 2, 
We can factor it just like if it were a quadratic. So we would just need to say, what are factors of 9 that add to negative 10? And that's going to be um, hmm, negative 9 and negative 1, right? Only instead of saying x minus 9, we're going to say x squared minus 9. That's a 2. And x squared minus 1. Because then when you FOIL it, you've got your x squared times your x squared is your x to the fourth. And then you have minus 1 x squared minus 9 x squared gives you minus 10 x squared. And negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. Don't forget about that 4x in the beginning. And we're not done because we have to solve. Also, x squared minus 9, what is that, guys? That's x plus 3x minus 3. And x squared minus 1 is x plus 1x minus 1. All these differences of squares. So now if I set each of these pieces equal to 0, I'm going to get 0, negative 3, and positive 3. Yes, you can write plus or minus as long as it's nice and clear. Negative 1 and positive 1. And we are finished. There are five answers to that. But goodness gracious, look, it was a fifth degree. So doesn't that make sense? It does to me. Okay, and this very last example is a word problem. You are designing a marble basin that will hold a fountain for a city park. There's a picture of it here. The basin's sides and bottom should be one foot thick. Its outer length should be twice its outer width and outer height. What should the outer dimensions of the basin be if it is to hold 36 cubic feet of water? All right, so the first thing we have to do is realize, okay, well, volume is length times width times height, right? But I want the... I'm solving for the outer dimensions, but it's, if it's holding 36 cubic feet of water, I really need the inner dimensions, right? I need to figure out what x is. Okay, so our inner dimensions, um, our interior length, that's going to be this length right here. Well, we know that this is 2x. We know that that's 1, and that's 1. So... The interior length is 2x minus 2. You all agree with that, right? I mean, we took two little red pieces off. Okay, then the width. The width here is x, but the inner width is x. Take off a foot and take off a foot. So x minus 2. And then the height inside, I'm just going to draw a line down. The height inside is the height outside minus the bottom. Notice that it doesn't have a top. So the height, which is x, we're just subtracting 1, right? Because we have a bottom but not a top. All right, so that's supposed to add up to 36. How are we going to solve this? All right, there are several steps to a problem like this. The first thing you're going to do is multiply it all out. That's why we did the multiplication um, you know, unit in this, or a section of this unit. So I'll save you some time, but you're going to foil, 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 and you're going to get this. Uh, 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 10x minus 4. And then we've got equals 36. Now, whenever you're solving a polynomial, you have to set it equal to 0 every single stinking time. And most of you guys already know that. It's the people that don't watch the videos and aren't hearing me say that that are going to get it wrong. But if I subtract 36 from negative 4, I get minus 40. And then we need to factor this. So we've got a, uh, a GCF of 2x. No, just 2, sorry. And we can try to group it because there's four terms here. Um, I can take an x squared out, and I have x minus 4. I can take out a positive 5, and I have x minus 4. It works wonderfully. I'll put it over here. So we have this 2 that we started with. We have x squared plus 5, and we have x minus 4. Oh, so it's messy. Sorry. x squared plus 5 won't factor any further. So now it's all unfactorable polynomials. We set each one of these equal to 0. If I set 2 equal to 0, nothing happens. I can't solve for x. If I set x squared plus 5 equal to 0, I'm going to end up getting plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Well, that's not real, and this is a real marble basin, so that doesn't work. And if I say x minus 4 equals 0, x equals 4. So I know x equals 4. 
And the question was, what are the outer dimensions? So if this is 2x and x equals 4, then that's going to be 8 feet. And if that's x and x equals 4, that's going to be 4 feet. And that's x, so that's 4 feet. So it's 8 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet. The end.